Hi, this lecture is about torus fracture. The objective of this lecture is we'd like to elaborate on the pathology of torus fracture, and we're going to explain the X-ray picture of torus fracture in different anatomical side, and then we will uh, discuss the clinical presentation of torus fractures in general and describe the management of children with torus fracture. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedic and Sport Medicine, um, written by myself, Dr. Naga, and Dr. Abdu. Uh, this is a very successful book. This is the second edition in 2020 um, for the first book, which was extremely successful and published in 2014. So what is the pathology of torus fracture? As we said, the other name of the torus fracture is buckle fracture because the bone buckles. The pathology of uh, torus fracture is failure of one bone cortex in compression while the opposite cortex is intact. So there is a, one cortex has no angulation or displacement, the other cortex failed in compression. So if you can see here, this is a lateral view of the wrist. We're going to show um, many examples for this radius torus fracture. I am here just uh, explaining the pathology. This is one cortex of the radius here. It's intact, no, no uh, interruption here. While this cortex here has failed in compression, means it has buckled. That's why the name of the fracture is buckle fracture or torus fracture. So one cortex has failed in compression, the other cortex is intact. And because it failed in compression and other cortex is intact, it's very stable injury. Uh, what does it mean? Stable means it does not move and it can take some stresses uh, on the extremity. Of course, there will be pain, but there is no weakness of the, uh, or no significant weakness of the bone structure. So torus fracture, it's one cortex fails in compression, the other cortex is intact. The other name of it is buckle fracture. Now we're going to see multiple examples of torus fracture in different bones, uh, so you can get used to that picture and identify it easily when you see that x-ray. So this is actually the x-ray that we just saw. Uh, it's a dis uh, uh, distal radius um, uh, torus fracture, and by far distal radius torus fracture um, uh, is the most common torus fracture. So most common torus fracture happens in the distal radius. So you can see here, this is the lateral view. This is the ulna here, the smaller bone, the bigger bone, which is this, is the radius. This is the volar, because we know the thumb is volar, and this is the dorsal. So if you see the volar um, aspect here has a compression uh, fracture or torus fracture uh, on this side, while the dorsal side is intact. If you see here is the AP view of the same patient, you can see the buckling here. Uh, so that tells you that um, there, there is some buckling or compression that happens, which we know happen on the volar uh, cortex, uh, resulted in the AP, you can see uh, that uh, small bump here. So uh, this is the AP and lateral view of the distal radius with a torus fracture. As we said, this is the most common torus fracture. Um, you can see it in the AP, that small nut that happens here, but by far it is much more obvious in the lateral view. Uh, as you can see here, failure in compression while the lateral, while the dorsal cortex is intact. So this is a normal x-ray. I want to put here a normal x-ray of the wrist so you can um, have an idea how it looks. So this is a normal x-ray. You can see here is the lateral, here is the AP. Uh, the uh, cortices should be smooth with no buckling uh, or no signs of any compression fracture or um, uh, interruption of the cortex. If you see here, this is another example of the torus, so this is an AP. If you see in the AP, I put arrows here where it shows that small bump. So that small bump, you can see it here in the AP, it tells you that something abnormal is going out here. This should not be the case. Uh, obviously now, if you get the lateral, you will see the torus fracture, obviously. So here, this is the ulna. Radius is this bone here. And you can see that in the uh, volar cortex here, uh, everything is um, intact, but in the dorsal aspect this time, you can see a compression fracture. If you uh, remember the previous x-ray, uh, the uh, fracture was in the volar. Uh, I'm going to show it to you again. This one, the torus fracture, is in the dorsal aspect, while the volar one is intact here. So this is a torus fracture because it only happened in one cortex and you can see here, you can see the bump here and here. It's, it, it signifies that there is some buckling that happened in the bone. And we know here from that lateral view uh, that that happens in the dorsal cortex and the volar cortex is intact. 
As I promise you, I'm going to bring you lots of examples of torus fracture, but this um, uh, slide here is to review the two examples that we saw before for torus distal radius. As we said, torus distal radius is the most common. This was the first example. Volar cortex is this one. We know because the thumb is always volar, and you can see the fracture here happens in the volar cortex, the buckling, the compression um, uh, failure happened into the uh, uh, volar cortex while the dorsal cortex is intact. If you can see here, this is the second example that I showed you in the previous slide. It happens in the dorsal. We know the volar from the thumb. It happens in the dorsal uh, cortex here. Uh, the failure happens in the dorsal cortex while the volar cortex is intact. So the, um, as you see between these two examples, uh, uh, the torus fracture can affect the volar or the, uh, the dorsal or the uh, volar cortic cortices, one of them, and the other one will be intact, and this is the definition of torus fracture. Uh, now, let's see more examples. Um, I want you to get used to it. Uh, you have to see many examples of torus fracture uh, to feel comfortable identifying it. So you can see here this area here. This is the buckling here of the volar surface um, uh, and the dorsal surface is intact. Uh, and you can see in the AP, this side, it looks okay to me. This side, you can see this is small, very small knob here indicating that there is something going on. And of course, you can see it obviously in the lateral view with um, uh, compression here. So this is a to another example of a torus fracture distal radius. Uh, another example of a torus fracture, a little bit more proximal. You can see here a very small knob here in the AP and in the dorsal cortex and in the, I'm sorry, in the volar cortex here, you can see a very minimal amount of uh, compression. Uh, so this is a torus fracture. It's a little bit more proximal uh, than normal. However, it can happen, of course, in any area of the bone. So you can see a very small knob here. Here looks okay. In the lateral view, you can see one cortex field in compression. The other one looks intact. Uh, another example of a torus fracture, this one is also of the um, uh, uh, volar um, cortex, a very, very minimal amount of compression, so it's not a smooth line. There is this amount here, this is a buckling or torus, and you can see here in the AP, um, again, it's a little bit more proximal than usual, but you can see the knob here, and it, this is where the, you can see it obviously in the lateral view, dorsal is intact, volar small compression area. So this is um, uh, another example. Uh, this is the uh, wrist and the radius uh, in a very young child. Uh, you can see here the AP show a very small knob here indicating that there may be a, a pathology going on. The lateral view with magnification here will show uh, the pathology much more obvious. You can see, so here is the radius. This is the ulna and you can see the radius here has a small torus fracture, which is compression injury in the dorsal cortex. The volar cortex is intact, smooth, no problem. The dorsal cortex has this small torus fracture. So this is a torus fracture of the distal radius uh, in a young child. This is a, another example of a torus fracture. This is a small child. Um, uh, he fell down, uh, x-rays was taken for the whole forearm, uh, AP and lateral. You can see here in the AP, uh, uh, there is a, an obvious uh, 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 small uh, uh, change here in the uh, bone, indicating that there is a pathology. Uh, you can see it uh, obviously here in the lateral view of the forearm. Uh, you can see the uh, buckle area here in the dorsal um, uh, cortex of the radius. Uh, so this is a torus fracture in a small uh, child. Um, and um, uh, this is uh, another example for um, uh, a torus or a buckle fracture uh, that we commonly see. This is another example for a torus fracture. Torus fracture has usually less pain than uh, regular uh, complete fractures. Uh, so sometimes the family will think that this is a sprain. Uh, however, with persistent complaint, they will bring the patient. So this patient actually um, is a child who fell down one week ago. Um, uh, family in the beginning thought it may be just a sprain, a uh, child sometimes complaining, sometimes he's feeling okay, and then when the pain persisted, they uh, came for um, uh, the orthopedic surgeon, and you can see here um, the, the x-ray that we took in the office, you can see that uh, we don't see the normal knob here, but we see that there is some 
a sort of a more density here in the lateral view you can see obviously here uh, in this area this is the uh, uh, torus part but there's something more that you can see here the periosteal fracture indicating healing uh, so if you see uh, we can make a, a line here uh, this is the torus uh, this is the periosteal fracture here you can see here this is the uh, torus fracture and this white material here this is the periosteal reaction indicating healing so this is an, an x-ray of uh, uh, one of my patient uh, presenting a few days after the injury which is common in torus fracture um, so when we got the x-rays it definitely showed that this um, a torus fracture with healing you can see the healing here obviously uh, uh, in this area here uh, that periosteal reaction um, and you can see the torus uh, fracture in this area this is another example um, with a patient uh, fell down on both wrists having pain on both wrists uh, presented to my office and you can see here both in the right and in the left side there is a torus fracture so you can see here torus fracture so the volar aspect of the radius is intact the dorsal aspect has a buckling here so this is a buckle fracture or a torus fracture same thing here uh, this cortex is intact and this cortex has a compression failure so it's a torus fracture or buckle fracture so this is um, a, another example patient fold in both sides and in both sides patient uh, developed torus fracture we can see here another example for very young uh, patient coming with pain after falling down in these cases uh, because it's very hard to examine these children uh, we get x-ray of the whole upper extremity and if you can see here there is an obvious torus fracture of the distal radius another example here you can see the torus fracture you can see the knob here in the anteroposterior and in the lateral view um, you can see it here in the dorsal aspect of the radius uh, the compression failure here so this is a torus fracture the volar cortex here is intact no problem in it so that there is only one cortex which failed one cortex failed in compression so this is a torus fracture the uh, torus fracture as we said the most common uh, location is this the radius but it can happen in other places you can see here a torus reaction a torus fracture i'm sorry in the proximal tibia you can see here the uh, compression uh, that happens uh, here you can see it in the, in the lateral view and in the anteroposterior view here is the uh, it's anteroposterior view of the lower leg and when we uh, magnified here that uh, part of the proximal tibia you can see the small knob here so this is a a torus fracture of the proximal tibia another location for a torus fracture you can see it here this is the first metatarsal this child is having pain in the foot uh, after uh, object falling on him you can see here is torus fracture uh, is very obvious in the first metatarsal base of the first metatarsal uh, another uh, torus fracture here in the uh, toe um, uh, the proximal uh, phalanx of the second toe you can see here in both the anteroposterior and the oblique you can see here um, this knob here indicating the torus fracture uh, you can see other cortices here and here all of them are smooth and this is where the torus fracture is uh, another example here a torus fracture of the uh, distal part of the fifth metatarsal you can see it obviously here in the anteroposterior and in the oblique view in the lateral view also you can see it and here after magnification you can see the torus uh, fracture uh, obviously here uh, another area of a torus fracture proximal uh, humerus um, you can see the uh, small uh, knob here uh, and in the uh, uh, anteroposterior uh, with um, internal rotation uh, the fracture here can be seen on one cortex there is failure in compression all these um, are examples of torus fracture as we said the most common is distal uh, radius but it can happen in other place uh, here is another uh, example of a torus fracture uh, in the uh, distal tibia uh, so i'm bringing here both sides for comparison here uh, uh, the right side uh, looks okay the left side you can see obviously here there is a small knob here and with um, uh, mortis internal internal rotation view you can see here these are the smooth 
um, the cortices of the tibia and the fibula. When we come here, you can obviously see that this is small knob here. This is not present here. So this is the anteroposterior. This is the internal uh, rotation or what we call the mortis view of the ankle. And you can obviously see the difference between the left side and the right side. Here, the all cortices are very smooth. There is no uh, failure of any cortex here. You can see uh, this knob here indicating some failure um, uh, and a torus fracture. So an, another example here, torus fracture of the distal uh, tibia. You can see here is very obvious the small knob here. And in the lateral view, you can see that the um, uh, uh, posterior surface of the tibia has filled in compression. The anterior surface looks um, uh, uh, intact, no problem. The fibula looks intact. So it's the posterior tibia which has that failure in compression. And you can obviously see it here uh, um, uh, with that small knob. And um, uh, this patient also came a few weeks after that, and we got another X-ray, and you can see here the signs of healing. So this is the periosteal reaction now, and here the periosteal fraction is so obvious. So if it, I'm going to point it uh, out for you here, all this area here, this triangle of new bone, this is the periosteal reaction, uh, um, indicating that the um, fracture was here. Uh, so this is a healed torus fracture now. Um, we don't get to see um, the healed torus fracture frequently because as we're going to, um, to say in the management that we usually don't ask them to come back because it's a stable injury, uh, but this patient presented back and we got another X-ray and I wanted to show it to you for you here. Uh, all this is the colors indicating that the fracture was here. What is the clinical presentation for cases uh, of um, uh, torus fracture? And similar to fractures, there is pain and swelling. Uh, but in torus fracture, it, the pain and swelling is mild to moderate. It's not severe as a regular fracture and complete fracture. That's why uh, sometimes the family will come few days after the injury because um, in the beginning, um, you may think it's just a sprain or a contusion. There is no deformity because the alignment of the bone is maintained. Regarding weight bearing, in, the, in most cases, the patient can weight bear with a marked limping and it will be intermittent. So there will maybe one day that he doesn't want to put weight, the other day, he put some weight, but there is obvious limping. So this is the clinical presentation for torus fracture. Uh, the management um, uh, immobilization, uh, we do not have to apply cast. Um, you can put just a removable splint uh, or a cam boot, uh, um, a controlled ankle motion boot. Um, and in most cases, there is no need for referral to orthopedic uh, surgeon uh, or follow up. Um, if you feel comfortable that this is a torus fracture, uh, you can just apply in the distal radius removable splint and tell the family to use it for about two to three weeks. Usually two weeks is more than enough. Um, uh, or if it's in the lower extremity, you can use a um, boot, cam boot, and a same, a same thing, you ask the family to use it for uh, um, uh, two to three weeks. There is no uh, need to sleep uh, with the cam boot or, or with the removable splint. And if you feel comfortable, you do not need to refer the patient uh, or uh, to see them for follow-up. Uh, thank you. Uh, all my videos are for educational purpose only and please consult the doctor before uh, any decision. Thank you.